Intensify the fire, Shiva. I intensify it first and foremost in your heart. Open your heart now to receive the infinite God that I am, that you are, that we are. For I, Shiva, desire to enter. Open your heart. I knock at the door. Will you receive me, my loves? Yes! Thus I come. 
I come as the great regulator of life and the flow of life. Oh, the mighty flow of life in your being. I come to cleanse and purify your heart from the physical level to the very heart of the inner Atman unto the inner God. Not that the Atman requires purification, but that your perception of the Atman requires purification. Oh, my beloved ones, won't you be this night my Parvati, my Durga, my Kali, and be seated as brides, one and all. With great anticipation, mighty yogis of the East have seen me fly to this place, and they are joyous as they hear with the inner ear their devotions to Shiva. Shiva I am, Shiva you are. Will you not be now the negative polarity of my being forever and forever and forever so that we may purge the earth of death and hell so that earth may go through her purgation and the souls of the earth and the dead, and the deader than dead, might be consumed by the power of divine love. Lo, I am that Shiva. Lo, I am intensifying that fire. Now I send forth my light through all the arteries and the veins and the capillaries. I send my light now. Take a mighty in-breath with me. Now over the mighty breath that you inbreathe, which is my own breath, I am sending light and revigoration and eternal youth and regeneration. Lo, I am that I am. Lo, I am that I am, and I may be seated in your physical body. I may be seated in your desire body. I may be seated in your mental body. I may be seated in your etheric body. Now then, if you will invite me, I will do so promptly. I enter for a solemn purpose, beloved. I enter because I desire to give myself this night to the mighty warriors of light whom you are, to the blessed devotees, to the blessed mothers and sisters and daughters and knights and heroes all over the world. I desire to give you a boost. I desire to give you that much of myself which the law of your being allows. Each day the law of your being is read to you by your holy Christ self. The law changes almost like the readings on the stock market, beloved. For there is the coming and the going, and the rising and the falling, as you make negative karma, as you balance the negative by the positive, and as you continue and continue and continue. Now then, beloved ones, I am desiring to give you more light, for prolonged incarnation. I can give this to you, beloved, today, but the one sure way for you to sustain it and maintain it is to recite 
one of these bhajans to me daily. For in the power of the sound you have generated and will generate again and again, so may you have a recording of this assembly in this place in the heart, in this place which is purged physically and at inner levels by the mighty rain of Alpha, by the mighty rain of Omega. The clearing of the earth is one of the points on the agenda of this conference for the Darjeeling Council and for others of our bands. So, beloved, if you will take the recording of the sound that is echoed in this tabernacle of the congregation, resounding amongst the hills and the mountains, you will know that I will surely jump inside of you again each day for the giving of a one, a single one of these bhajans. I look to your longevity, for I look for pillars of fire in the earth. I look for those who shall walk with the walking stick of Shiva, who will walk with my flame and in the honor of God, and who will be a focus of that white fire, dispersing death and hell where'er you walk. Yes, beloved ones, I look for Western Shavites, who will follow me, who will be myself, that I might be their self, and that is the key. If you will allow me to be yourself for moments of the day, I will repolarize you. Take care then that you observe the rules of the great white brotherhood, that you let not the sun go down upon your wrath, that you resolve all things by the fire of Shiva, by the fire of the violet flame, by the blessed heart of the great avatar, Saint Germain. Yes, beloved ones, we rejoice that the Western yogis and yoginis are pursuing the path of the violet flame. It is an action ray when coupled with a ruby fire that I bear and the white light will bring immense change in the earth. Now change needs to come quickly, yet not so quickly as to be a scorching fire that destroys in the process of the change. The violet flame will bring about it gently. It is worth all lifetimes and many lifetimes to stay at the heart of the inner retreat to stay near the Royal Teton Ranch where you can have some livelihood for yourself and your families just to be able to come together in such numbers at least one day a week that is set aside for this mighty action of the sacred fire's invocation. It will not take much more for the hierarchies of the Himalayas and the Great White Brotherhood to do much for the earth I can tell you in these days, deep changes are taking place gently by transmutation. Oh, thank you for the violet flame you have invoked this day. All elemental life blesses you, honors you, and bows before the light of God within you. You need these servants of God and man in nature, beloved ones. And when they see your auras blazing and your dedication in their behalf, there is a ripple of mighty hope going forth through the mountains, the forests, the hills of all the hemispheres. And they desire to see this entire body transported here and there over the earth. So we shall accommodate them, shall we not? Yes. Therefore, we shall go this night you have made your certain connection with a great white brotherhood. Make the call and seal yourself in that ritual for transport and holy work. So do it, beloved, without the necessity of going through all of the words, but accept and affirm in your inner being before you retire that you shall therefore journey with Shiva. You will journey to the places in the earth 
where earth is violated, elemental life is violated, the resources of the earth are violated, and the toxins and the poisons are violating the bodies of all people, but most especially those of the light bearers. Let there be a cleansing in the earth without major cataclysm. This is our goal. To this we call you. Saint Germain has called you in the past. And many of you have responded, giving day after day or calls to the violet flame. I ask you to consider again as the cycles are turning in this decade to multiply the mantras of the violet flame by the ruby ray and the ruby ray by the power of the mantras to Shiva, to Lord Krishna, and see what you can do to clear the minds, clear the opposition, clear those conditions about which you hear. Beloved ones, I ask you to be seated as my brides. If you will remain seated now and be still in the posture of your preference, you will find that I am able to now build along the spinal altar a certain conductor of light and a certain healing of your central nervous system and brain. This is essential, beloved ones. You are hearts to be cherished, and I indeed cherish you. Blessed ones, there are many actions being taken in the earth, none more diabolical in this moment than the decree by the justices of the Supreme Court of the United States of America, five in number, who have agreed to uphold Roe versus Wade and the right which is now called a constitutional right of woman to abort her own life becoming life, her own child in the womb, her own God in the making, for that is God that is being aborted. It is the abortion of the Atman. It is the abortion of a mission, and therefore it becomes, in some respect, the abortion of an age. Each time an individual is denied entrance into this world, can you believe, beloved ones, as I have seen with my own eye, that actual abortion being shown on television last night? Blessed ones, how can there be such low, low levels of descending into the darkness and dragging woman and her child to that level? Oh, beloved ones, these members of this court are examples of those who follow the way of Din in the betrayal of the Lord God's judgment and therefore took upon themselves the right to judge, the right to condemn life, the right to criticize, the right to purge and destroy. Yes, beloved ones, they shall come to naught. The living Christ Jesus under Sanat Kumara has given to you the individual judgment calls and the judgment for the binding of the dweller on the threshold. These individuals who have upheld a law that should never have been made a law, these individuals who have neglected to the Holy Child now find upon their own heads the burden of ultimate karma for every child who is aborted hence Following their decision, beloved ones, this is an hour of great, great darkness in the land. For we had hoped that there would be one individual who could be moved. Well, I am Shiva, and I tell you, I went to each one of them at inner levels, and I attempted to move them, and they did defy and reject me and they would not be moved from their position to guarantee the right to kill the child who is God in the womb. For shame, for shame, for shame upon this civilization. Therefore I say, what shall we do? We shall call the judgment upon those who know what they do, and these five know what they do. 
and all those who have led a woman astray, those who know what they do and pronounce the judgment and provide the abortion and the abortion tools and the abortion clinics and the abortion doctors, all those who know what they do, they shall receive unmitigated judgment from my heart, for I am the destroyer of death, and they are death incarnate, and they are seeking to lead the children of the light into their death camp and to take them from embodiment. O oh, shame, O oh, shame, O oh, shame, beloved, that that very abortion you saw on television was the abortion of a mighty light bearer. I enlist those who fear me not, who know that there are few resources directly available to you whereby the fire can be directed. Blessed ones, remember the scorching power of my third eye. Remember the whirling of my being and my aura as I dance in the heart of the sun and my own aura of manifestation. Therefore you see an ascended master and archangel, a god or goddess may go to those in embodiment and attempt to move them, attempt to convince them, even show them the Akashic records of where they will end up by the folly of their decision. But beloved ones, we do not interfere with free will. This is the law of all those who are beyond this level of embodiment. You have free will in the earth. These justices represent you. Therefore, you can call to God, and through your call, through your presence, and through your life, the judgment may descend upon them for their actions, for their deeds, and even for their rejection of Shiva. Understand, therefore, what lies in your hand. All you needed to understand was the mighty power of the Ain Sof and of the Sphere Oat, and then you could see the mighty tree of life superimposed upon you as the mighty I Am Presence. You could see the powers of God waiting to be invoked, waiting, waiting, when you say, how long, O Lord, how long, O Lord, will thou allow such suffering in the earth and the murder of the child, the Lord God says back to you, how long, O ye sons and daughters, how long, O ye brides of Shiva, will you wait to make the call and call for the judgment and the binding of the dweller on the threshold of the entire consciousness, the diabolical consciousness of abortion that comes directly out of the pit of death and hell. How long can you stand it any longer when you have the tools, the sponsorship, and must only say the word to see the turning of the cycles and the turning of the darkness and the dark ones until they shall no longer be able to inhabit the earth for the vibration of earth shall accelerate through your call and as it accelerates beloved ones therefore it will spin off those who are not of the light who will refuse to rise in vibration and they must go to another place that they created long ago and these very ones who complain, these environmentalists who complain about the pollutions of the earth, they will go to the very place that they themselves have polluted in the past, and they will truly have to deal with an environment that they themselves did destroy. And I speak not only of the physical environment, I speak of the astral plane and the mental belt. And the mental belt is highly polluted, so is the etheric octave. And therefore, beloved ones, when you increase in light when you the sons and daughters of God understand that the earth is the Lord's and you are the Lord's and you are his caretakers here below you are going forth to keep the planet earth and when you keep the light in your body and you keep the light in the temple then you will dominate you will be the dominant power as there are now the fallen ones who are the 
dominant power. Therefore, we are able to help the individual. But how can we help the multitudes, beloved ones, when they are beset and do embody the mass consciousness that is perpetrated upon them by the Nephilim gods and the fallen ones? But I say to you, you have the power in your mighty I am presence. You have the power in God and not in your human self, not in your carnal mind, not in the dweller on the threshold, but in God and God alone who lives in you to call for the binding of the destroyers in the earth, not the destroyer who is Shiva, but the Shiva who will destroy the destroyers, for I am Shiva. call Shiva. Only make the 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 call Shiva. I have given you this mantra. I have burned it into the cells of your being and into your very bones, lest you forget to only make the call Shiva, 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 to only make the call Shiva. Beloved ones, as I have stood and stood through a certain adept who shall not be unveiled to you this night, but I have stood through and around and in a certain adept, and I have pierced my eye through the eye of that certain adept in physical embodiment, and I have shown that one, that a certain individual in a certain place, a total stranger standing there, was an immediate manifestation in physical embodiment of a UFO, and that individual was there and was identified, and I did put through the eye of the adept the power of my own eye, and this individual quickly moved from that place and out of the sight of the adept was bound and was removed. Blessed ones, I say to you, work for your adeptship. Work for it and cherish it. Cherish it as though your adeptship was the very necessity and was the presence in the earth that would be there for the denying of abortion, for the sparing of those souls who must enter. Think of it as working for your knighthood or your ladyhood. Yes, beloved ones, think of the necessity to rise to the degrees of self-mastery because in that self-mastery I can work through you and know as I knew with that one that that one would not in any case or degree for that one had proved it many, many times to misqualify the light or the manifestation of my presence. I will take no chances. I will not make karma for your indiscretions, for your misuses of the light. Therefore, see who I will work through, who has the inner peace and the balance of the four lower bodies, who has followed the messenger in using the diet of the Eastern adepts 
as a means to that God control of all the physical levels of the body and then the emotions and then the mind and then the memory. Beloved ones, the discipline is total, but look at what is before you. If suddenly this place were removed and all of a sudden you were in a large arena and in that arena were men of war, men of largeness, and they were slaughtering thousands and thousands of babies. You would leap to the center, you would bind them, you would rescue those whom you could rescue. The situation of abortion is out of sight, out of mind. You are heroes and heroines every day of your lives as you serve, but do not blind yourselves to these events taking place daily, the murder of the child. Do not close your ears to the screams of the child, for they are heard across the planet, and these screams coming from every state and nation are reverberating. Such a sound, such a sound, beloved ones, what light bearers could possibly be attracted to embody here when the very sounds of the earth rise up whether as the agony of the child aborted or the anger of the fallen ones as they go through the horrors of untimely death and all of the plagues coming upon the race. Yes, there is great pain in the earth, but there is no pain so great to my heart, to your heart or to the heart of the Divine Mother than that pain of a soul that is dying, the soul that is being lost, the soul that is fading away, whether from weakness or from the anger and rebellion against God that in turn has also become a passivity. The death of the soul, beloved, even far exceeds the pain of the abortion of a child. For a child may come again and be born again if parents can be found. But when there is the death of the soul, the potential to realize God is permanently removed from that particular individuality in God that had opportunity to make that individuality permanent. I think you agree with me that the infamy of planet Earth has reached a high water mark. And I think you know in the depth of your souls and in the marrow of your bones that things cannot get much worse without some reaction from the great Tao, from the great Ain Sof, from the great God, the unmanifest God who chooses to manifest himself through us. Yes, beloved, it is an hour of such opportunity for the binding of the forces of Antichrist. I solemnly speak to you May you not forget my word and my message. May you fulfill all things necessary, and I say necessary in your life. But may you not heap and stack upon heap obligations and activities which are actually not necessary to your livelihood, to your divine plan to your good karma of caring for those in your care and for doing to others as you know God would have you do unto them, whoever is at the door. There are things you must do in life, but let us all admit once and for all there are many things we do that are not a necessity at all, whether to our health to our ongoing edification, or even to the opening of the flower of love of the heart. I ask you, please, 
Please make a list of those things that you can put aside and say, I have done these things long enough for many lifetimes. I can set them aside. For God in every child on planet Earth is crying out to me, and I cannot deafen my ears to those cries. I must help the little children. For once I was a little child too, and I was helpless. And I took the hand of my mother, and I took the hand of my father, and others in whose care I was, and I went where they took me. I had no power of my own to do this or that, and I waited the long years till I came to that point of maturity when I could say, I am an adult, I am free at last, I am my own person, I shall do what I must do. Blessed ones, being a child in the earth of whatever age is truly an unenviable position today. For the child abuse does rise, the toxic chemicals in the body, in the water, in the food, in the substances they partake of, in the toys they play with. What is fed to the mind through the television is nothing but death and hell itself. I place my image over the television between it and children. But beloved ones, they and their parents have free will, and I can only cre screen out so much. Remember you were once a child and helpless. And remember when you are in your final days, you may also be helpless. But today, you have the strength and the vigor of life and all that you would acquire by following the right formulas of existence on Earth. You have my offer of my presence. I believe that deep down in your heart, there is not one of you who is present at this conference that cannot say, because you are true chelas of the light, that you are not satisfied with your present condition of spirituality, and that you are here because you are compelled by your inner soul and your inner Atman to rise another level, and then another level, and then another level. You have reached a certain plateau in certain areas, and you have finally said, I cannot rest here. I am not breathing enough of the breath of eternal life. I am not imbibing enough of the light of the eternal God, and I am not doing enough for my people. I will find out how. I will do something, and I will see change in my life that I might give a better self to my Lord Brahman. Blessed ones, in the flame, I am Shiva. Shiva! Yes. Shiva, yes. Shiva, yes. Shiva, yes. I am that flame. I am that Shiva where you are. I want you to feel this with a great God reality. I am here now as the slayer of illusion, and for this very moment, I take the mighty sword and I slay illusion all around you, and I ask you to take the remainder of this class to see just what you can see for the illusions that I will now take.
as you might say. You could cut it with a sword. The illusions are as thick as the densest cheese you would find. Can you imagine living with such illusions? Yet you do, beloved ones. The sacred fire raised up, the violet flame will clear it. My beloved brides, I take you to my chamber, the chamber of my heart this night. We shall go and minister to elemental life from the gathering place of the Royal Teton Retreat, where millions of other light bearers who are receiving this instruction at inner levels will be happy to join you. Our final stop will be, once again, Yugoslavia. You have made profound progress at deep inner levels. Let us keep it up for 33 days, beginning from the moment of our going forth and then our return. In the name of the Divine Mother, in whose body I serve above and below. I am Shiva 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 Shiva